coming back with the flashback, but he's just played three Thragtos. That's all he's done. And Mike isn't able to chase it down with his more, I guess what you would classify as unfair draw of like Invisible Stalker, suited up, suited up, you know, beat you down. Yeah, you're really seeing the, the dichotomy between, you know, playing just cards that are very powerful versus Mike who's leaning, you know, on a lot of synergy. And his deck doesn't mulligan that well because he does get into these spots where, you know, he, he just gets stuck. He actually just has to produce. And, you know, his cards, when they're combined together, can be powerful, but uh, he didn't get enough of them in this game. You know, he's definitely got two more lands than he really ever wants to draw already just sitting in play. And now he has to pass. That's that's the death knell for yep. uh, any Bant Expert player when they have to pass the turn with untapped creatures. That's like submitting to the ankle lock. Yep. It's never pretty. It's not good. So Restoration Angel is going to come in, Blink Thrag Tusk, Beast Token in, free power in the air in as well. So you saw Andrew was adding, you know, he was consistently adding five power to his board by bringing back Thrag Tusk. This allows him to add six with Restoration Angel and the Beast Token. And he's going to come across here yet again because there's no reason not to. Three Thrag Tusk, even, even the Pilgrims look like they might even want to yeah, play I, too. I, I don't see a reason to, to not ship everything. I could do the math and maybe figure out if it matters, but I don't think it does. And yeah. I think like the fact that the three Pilgrims combined with any uh, three power creature getting through definitely yeah. kill him. So. And so Mike Flores is going to concede the game. So Ad Andrew does win game number one with Junker Animator over Bant Hexproof. Mm -hmm. In a game that, you know, looking at it from turn three, you think Mike would have been a huge favorite there, but he wasn't able to find any more things to suit up, and then ends up just losing the game. And I think even a card like Simic Charm there, which he has a couple copies of, wouldn't have saved him either. Yeah, I think he needed, he really needed another enchantment to actually get it. I think the life he would have gained would have mattered a lot. Yeah. You know, getting an extra like six life on that turn could have been a huge deal. So yeah, it, it was definitely tight. Uh, Mike just, you know, only had four spells. That was really what it boiled down to. Which one way you can look at it. So we'll take a look at Mike's sideboard here. Two copies of Feeling Interact, three Ground Seal, two Negate, one Nevermore, three Near Hearth Pilgrim, and four Stranger Root, guys. First one that jumps out to me, of course, is Ground Seal. But once you move past that, you know, what card, if any, is there one that you want to bring in here? I could see bringing in uh, a Feeling Interact. I don't think I would want both, though. That's just me. I, I like having access to that kind of effect. And Simic Charm's not really that great in this matchup. So I would be looking to cut those, and uh, feeling a dread can kind of duplicate a lot of the things Simic Charm could do in the first place. Okay. Uh, also, like I'm not super excited about Voice of Resurgence in the matchup or Lockstun Smiter. They both get trumped by Thrag Tusk. I think if I was choosing, I would take out Smiter first. Okay. Because you know Voice, as we as we said already, you know can function in that chump blocker capacity, and he's just cheaper. Okay. So like having a cheaper threat, you can play on turn two to actually get in some damage, maybe a little more relevant. Would so. you rather have Voice or Stranger based? I think I would rather have voice. Okay. I can realistically see the token getting, you know, bigger than a, a 3 2. That's not that uncommon. And it also can lock out Reanimator from doing some of its res Restoration Angel shenanigans, right? Okay. That's true. Uh, I mean, another card to look at here is Near Hearth Pilgrim, where, you know, just gaining life and racing might be, you know, the play of the day. And this allows you to facilitate that more if you're just racing back and forth, which is what that game looked like. Yeah. And if Mike was able to draw, you know, another enchantment, wouldn't, wouldn't be able to keep doing that. But maybe you don't need that much redundancy. It is a 2-1 that's probably never going to get to attack. So it's basically like an enchantment. Yeah, and keep in mind, you can't get lifelink twice. True. So if you unflinch and courage your creature and you bond it with a near heath pilgrim, that's just nothing. Yeah, you don't get yeah. to double up. So in that game, for example, say we just gave Mike a free near heath pilgrim, the best he really could have done was attack with a geist and give the angel token lifelink, and then his geist would have died in combat. So, you know, a, uh, a war leader's helix, if you like a two-card combo to pull a war leader's helix yeah. and a goblin piker is not the best. Probably not the best, no. So... That's what Mike's looking at. How about on Andrew's side? Uh, Andrew's got uh, an interesting side. He's got two of many cards and then three acidic slimes. Uh, as far as the cards we'll bring in, uh, I think we'll see abrupt decays come in. I'm more, way more interested in those than acidic slimes because you can use it to actually, you know, mess up Mike's combat step. Uh, as we saw in that game, you know, we discussed what if Mike has a Spectral Flight, he could just flight up that Geist, get in for eight. That would reverse that race in a, in a big way. Yep. Uh, but you know, if Andrew has something like abrupt decay in that spot, he can actually just, you know. Take that guy's right out of the sky, block it. No, no, no shenanigans at foot. So I'm definitely interested in abrupt decay. Also does double duty and killing ground suit, of course. Okay. Uh, beyond that, he has access to voices of his own, tragic slips, and garrick relentless as cards that seem relevant. 
Uh, the remainder of the sideboard is filled out with Obstat, Sin Collector, and the Acidic Slimes, as we mentioned already. Uh, I'm not really excited about any of them. I, I guess I could see Voice as it's, you know, kind of a clock, but I don't, I don't think so. Like, I don't think I'd want it. I want a Cynic Slime. You want a Cynic Slime? I, I mean, do. You I don't saw really that game. Michael, Michael drew two enchantments. I, I get it. I get it. Gotta but kill him. What are you going to cut it? What are you going to cut? All right, well, let's start with, uh, let's take a look at Fiend Hunter. Sure. Not all that impressed by him. I agree we should cut those. Creator of Behemoth, I think you want to leave in as like kind of a miser's yeah. good lucky card. I don't love Lingering Souls against a deck that has Unflinching Courage and Rancor. I mean, at the same time, you know, if they don't have one of those, it's, it can be one of your better cards. I think you're winning it either, anyway if you don't want, if they don't have one of those, right? I don't know. I'm not a math scientist. So I would never <laughs> claim for you to be one of those. <laughs> but I would think if they haven't drawn one of their eight good enchantments, that you're probably going to win anyway. I think that it's kind of a... I think you're kind of fortunate if Lingering Souls, like you're casting it and your opponent's like, ah, oh, God, I can't get through these spirit tokens with my eight trample effect deck. I feel like the thing is, if you're bringing in the acidic slimes, I would kind of want Lingering Souls because they complement each other if you're removing the good enchantment. Although, obviously, you can't catch Rancor. That's true. I, I understand where you're coming from there. I don't know. I mean, I see a deck with, that has 16 creature enchantments, and it seems like... I mean, 12 of which you can kill. Rancor obviously doesn't yeah. work. But I see that, and I see you know, a Cynic Slime that you can power out on turn 3 or turn 4. To me, that just sure. seems worth it. I guess it's fine. I mean, obviously, Andrew uh, agrees with you. He brought them in. We can see one in his hand right now. You know what they say, Glenn. Great minds. They think alike. Yeah, dumb minds. Yeah. <laughs> Not so yeah. similar either. Yeah. I've, never, I've never heard that saying before, so can't quote that. These players off to startlingly similar starts. So here is Lingering Soul. So, all right. He agrees with me and you. Yeah. So I would say Great Minds think alike again, but you know, I I'm actually, not going to this time. I bet he cut uh, Mulch. Okay. That's actually a card you really commonly cut in aggressive matchups. And this is definitely an aggressive matchup. So there's your turn two smiter, turn three smiter, excuse yeah. me, into a breeding pool, passing the turn back. And he drew a mulch. He drew so a mulch. I guess we're wrong there. Yeah. I mean, maybe salvage. Uh, it's kind of the same principle, but I, I, we're, all, we're both sure he cut fiend hunters. I guess uh, angel serenity is actually. You know, I don't know if we need all three of those. Pretty, yeah, it's pretty bad here. I think. Yeah, I could see trimming those. That makes some. That makes a little more sense. I could see cutting like the three fiend hunters. And one or two angels, maybe. Yeah. Bringing in like the two replicas and three acidic slimes, and I don't even think you need anything else really. The flashback and lingering souls again. Two more spirit tokens here. Next time we should just bring in BBD. Get, get his opinion. Yeah, he knows. He's, He's right knows. over there playing chess. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Against an, an aged old man, <laughs> also known as AJ Song. Uh, Mike. Contemplating how best to get in the race here. I think that means he does not have an unflinching courage or a rancor. That's what it feels like to me, too. So, yeah. in with the big dumb elephant. Can't Dude. block fast enough. See what the follow up's gonna be. Probably another smiter from the looks of it. Maybe a guys. You know, this is part of the, uh, as he does play a guys insane trap, this is part of the problem with this deck is that you have no way to control your draw step. Um, and, you know, with the modern version of this deck, you played eight guys. A couple dried arbors, and your entire deck is enchantments. And you know the the creatures are like impossible to kill because they all have hexproof. But additionally, as you're going to see ethereal armor here on the guys the same trap, you know the enchantments made it hard to kill too because they're all totem armor effects. Yeah. Here you have to play like more creatures than you want to, but as a result, like you get to play less enchantments. So you're going to have some draws where it's just like oh, just like a bunch of dudes and no pants, or vice versa. Well, Andrew just brought in, uh, just drew an opposite. So he uh, he got a little friskier with the sideboard than we assumed. He's going to take two, and he can actually cast opposite that because that is an overgrown yeah. team there. So. He can cast opposite that or acidic slime, depending on what he wants to do. It's interesting that Mike went ahead and played this ethereal armor. It did expose it to slime, let his opponent know what was going on, going to be going on with this Geist. Yep. But it also has the added benefit of protecting Mike's breeding pool. So it's possible Mike, you know, considered that as well. Slime took care of that ethereal armor. Mike going to untap. Gonna draw guys to say trap looking much weaker now as well. With no protection, it can't just attack willy nilly as it would before. Also, with acidic slime on the table, now Andrew has access to very, very good restoration angels. Yeah, Andrew's pretty far ahead right now. Oh, too bad. Yeah, that might have. It's possible that was a protection play on that breeding pool because yep. Spectral Flight 
gives Geist the ability to actually, you know, turn this clock around, start racing. It gives him superiority over a variety of things. Uh, but as you know, I said when we were talking about that sideboarding, that spectral flight snips its wings. Geist could be in trouble. Yep. It could get very, very ugly if there's a Restoration Angel in combat for Andrew. And you see him looking through his hand a little bit here as Geist is going to come across here with the flight. You're going to see a Lingering Souls token jump in the way. Andrew just protecting his life total right now in a big way. Mike going to follow that up with a Voice of Resurgence and pass the turn back. Uh, and in combat, Restoration Angel for Andrew is going to be absolutely devastating if he has it. Yep. It is going to give Mike a, a token though, right? Yep. So it's possible Andrew will decide he doesn't want to give him the token and just get rid of it now. But that seems a little... I don't know. I'm not sure if, I'm not sure which is more valuable. The element of surprise or that token. And Mike's last card in his hand right now, it, Glenn, is Simic Charm. So that has the potential to make things a little bit hairy. Uh, does that give uh, permanence you control Hitchcock? No, I'm pretty sure it is just a creature you control. Just a creature? Okay. But we can bring it up on the screen, because I have been wrong before, and I will be wrong again. I, I just want to check. I think you're right, but uh, I wouldn't want to accidentally be wrong. I see a Mulcher. I know Boros Charm, for example, gives everything indestructible. Yeah. As one unlucky Q player learned when he cast Armageddon <laughs> this week. <laughs> Would that unlucky Q player be you? No, that would be my opponent. Uh, <laughs> okay, so it is permanent you control the next group. It is permanent, so That's all right. a big game. I'm glad that I checked. That's going to make that in-combat restoration angel much worse, but it doesn't look like Andrew's going to wait until... Oh, wow, game. he's not going to wait. Wow. That's a dagger for Mike. Amusingly enough, if Mike had not played that voice of resurgence, he might have had the result he was looking for with that Simic Charm. That's insane. I can't believe that he knew to cast it right now. Like, It's very enticing to just want to blow him out in combat with that trick. Maybe Andrew, unlike us, actually knows what Simic Charm does. Ah, uh, yeah, that could be a thing. That could be a thing. So Mike is going to untap. He's going to draw a really crafty play there by Andrew. Just a heads-up play. Not allow, not allow him to walk himself into a trap. It's very tempting to often, you know, wait to cast your flash in instance. Uh, it's a really common mistake people make. But, you know, if uh, you're not really gaining much by bluffing it or whatever, then uh, it's often going to be best to just go ahead and play your spell. Especially when you have the opportunity to ruin someone as badly as you can in combat there. You know, it's hard to really pass up on that. I mean, myself, I, I, I would be surprised if I didn't just, you know, I, I'm looking at my lips waiting for Mike to, oh, yeah, attack step, yeah, go ahead. Angel trigger, absolutely. Here we go. And it just would not have happened. Yeah, Mike would have got you good. He would have gotten an elemental token, and he would have gotten to keep all of his things. Yeah, yeah. So an attack here with the smiter. Acidic slime looks like it's going to get in the way here. And, you know, this feels like a pretty safe block if you're yeah. Andrew with an Imperial Rites in the graveyard. I actually think that this is an attack that Mike should have made on the previous turn. Uh, it's the exact same mistake I made in Vegas uh, when I lost in the top eight of that match. I did not attack with a Smiter when my opponent played an Acidic Slime when I was Mana Screwed, and I should have. It was a free four damage. There's no way my opponent's going to block because either he has Restoration Angels or he wants to draw them, keep me off my mana. So, under the same logic, Mike should have been fine with the trade on the previous turn as that would have kept Restoration Angel from changing his board state. Sure. So I think Mike missed an attack on the previous turn with the Smiter. Uh, and he tried. He made up for it here, but uh, the damage might already be done. There is an Embarrower right, so uh, things are getting hairy. So now you see Andrew reaching for some of those flyers here. He has. He is at 12 life. He's been using you know, his, his spirits to chump block as best he can to protect yeah. his life total. Doesn't want to take any unnecessary incremental damage, and now he's going to come across here for four, still being able to pressure Mike a little bit with those flyers in the air. He's going to go ahead and embarrass that slime. Mike's double checking on uh, Acidic Slime. He may be considering Simic Charming to protect his breeding pool, for example. Yep, that's going to be what he looks yeah. like he's doing. Realizes that he really needs the blue mana very badly. Yeah, he's got a number of blue cards in his deck. Spells that are blue, if you will. <laughs> Spectral Flight, Simic Charm, he's got one more copy of that. Um, Invisible Stalker, Geist of St. Traffs, some potential sideboard cards as well. This is actually a pretty tight race here. 
Where's that? I don't know what that. Uh, I guess that isolated chapel is in the graveyard or something. Oh, oh, he gave all of his things indestructible. Yeah, so, yeah, so a six line has to target. Yeah, so it has to target something else. Mike yeah. was checking to see if it's a maze. Savvy yeah. check on Mike's part. Uh, he did not use it to counter. He in fact used it to misdirect, as it were. So first of resurgence comes across. Andrew, uh, not interested in that trade. Yep. You see, Andrew draws a Gavney Township Ooh, here, so that changes a, everything. That's now. a big game changer for Andrew. And before, as you said, was a pretty close race. This certainly turns it around now because it gives Andrew a lot more closing speed yeah. in a game that he was probably setting up Craterhoof Behemoth yep. to be able to finish and one-shot Mike. Now he can definitely, you know, try some other things now with how he wants to go about closing this game. And don't forget, he does still have an Obzidat over there in his hand. As Andrew's going to come across for four in the air with that spirit token and the Restoration Angel again. Interesting. Going to yeah. pass the turn back. He passes. I think I would have played the Obzidat. Let's go ahead and get it down. I'm not sure what we're scared of. Gavin Township is theoretically more damage, but the opposite that's a lot more resilient. Wouldn't mind just having it in play. And the, game, the life that you gain is actually, you know, pretty relevant as well. The only way Mike can kill you is by putting your life total to zero, so yeah. an extra two life. Yeah, it yeah. certainly can't hurt. Yeah, it's not, it's not not helpful. And in that situation, I think, you know, if Andrew does play the opposite, he doesn't even blink it out. He just leaves it there to be able to block. I think that's a fine choice, goes wrong. Yeah. So really, it just would have consolidated his board position and put him at 12, which is not a bad place to be at all. Now you see Andrew figuring out how he does want to block for this turn. Looks like a Cynic Slime's going to get in front of the guy. St. Trap Spirit Token in front of maybe the Flyer. So Andrew goes down to 8. Mike plays the Temple Garden and just passes the turn back. Andrew, without a Gavin Township activation, a little bit surprised by that. Yeah, I think he uh, got ahead of himself. He's like, I'm about to cast Crater Hope Behemoth. This one's over. We'll see if it is over. I mean, well, that's a that's a lot of mana. That's a Crater Hope Behemoth. Oh, there it is. Mike checks the Sun Petal Grove in his hand yep. and concedes. And does extend the hand. So Andrew Hadam is going to win this yep. match. Two games to zero over Mike Flores and his Matt Hexproof deck. Junk Reanimator. Moving on, not the first time we've seen this before. That's true, uh, Junk Animator, you know, taking a matchup generally thought to be bad, flips it around. Obviously, I think game one he had like just the perfect draw to you know set himself up. 